I'm obsessed with him. I'm obsessed with him. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my January wrap up for 2024. I've read a total of 15 books this month so I'm going to be splitting it up into two separate parts. So this is part one. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have is There's Something in the Woods by Molly Lakovich. This is my friend Molly's book. I gave it a five out of five stars. It's probably one of my favorite things that she's ever written and it comes out today, February 12th. If you guys are interested in reading this book after hearing my review of it, then go check out Amazon. I'll leave the link down below and put it in your little shopping cart because it's real good. This follows Jay who after escaping from a mental institution that she was put in against her will, she steals a car and crashes it during a snowstorm. She stumbles into the woods and comes across a cabin in the woods where there is a mysterious man living there named Lori. Jay goes to this cabin and hides from authorities and she soon learns that Lori has also escaped from a mental hospital but he refuses to divulge why. As I spend more time together Jay learns to trust Lori and a bond grows between them. So I'm one of Molly's like beta readers I guess you could call it. So I read her first draft and this second draft which is the final product is so much better than the first one. Like all of the changes that I wanted to see implemented Molly put into the book and it is just incredible. It's probably one of the best things she's ever written in my opinion. As I've said before, I devour literally anything Molly writes. I just think that her storytelling is so much fun and this novella is right on par with her usual writing style. It also features a character named after me which is just so exciting to me. I'm just so stoked about the changes that Molly made to this book. One of the main feedbacks that I gave to Molly was that you really felt disconnected with Jay because we weren't really getting a sense of why she felt so connected to Lori in such a short amount of time. So Molly went back and added some chapter breaks that really give you an insight about who Jay is and how she got to the place that she was. The flashbacks truly made you feel more connected to Jay and it definitely gave you insight about who Jay is as a person. Having the story span across multiple days also helps the connection between Jay and Lori feel more believable. Not to mention that Lori is such a better character in this second draft. I was very wary of him in the first draft but this version of him is so I'm obsessed with him. I'm obsessed with him. He is just such a caring and thoughtful character and he definitely has a very rough exterior but the way that he took care of Jay was just so sweet and I very much enjoyed the inclusion of the one year later chapter and the direction that Molly took in this final draft. I just really want more of these two. Please Molly if you're watching this give me more of them like maybe like in their life now. I just... I can't get enough of these characters so 5 out of 5. Definitely go check out the link in the description box down below to buy a copy for yourself. It's out today! February 12th. Very exciting, um, but five out of five stars. I really loved it. The next book I read is I Loved You in Another Life by David Arnold, and I gave this a four out of five stars. This book follows Shosh, who loses her sister to a drunk driver and ends up hitting rock bottom during her grief. While she is in a drunken stupor, she hears a woman singing a very mysterious song. Evan's father walked out on his family, so now Evan is there picking up the pieces and trying to take care of his younger brother after hearing his mother's diagnosis. That then Evan begins hearing the same song. This is a very slow paced book but it definitely helps you connect with the characters on a more personal level. The supporting characters were probably my favorite. I think I liked them more than the main characters. Will, Evan's younger brother, was definitely my favorite. He was just a little cutie patootie and I just wanted to give him a hug. I really loved Allie and Miss Clark as well. I think that the interspersed chapters of Shosh and Evan's past lives were interesting but I honestly didn't really care about that part of the story. I don't know if there was too many or not enough, I just really wasn't feeling that aspect of this story. The biggest complaint I have for this book though is the ending. I just felt very unsatisfied and I just like didn't vibe with the way that the story ended, so I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up, I read Suddenly a Murder by Lauren Monez, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Cassidy, who plans a 1920s themed party at Ashwood Manor for her best friend Izzy and five of their closest friends for their graduation. While there, Cassidy's boyfriend Blaine is murdered, and the police shut down the party in order to start the investigation to figure out who is the murderer. This was a really fun murder mystery. I was invested from the very first chapter 
chapters. There were some twists and turns that I didn't see coming which was nice and everybody in the story had something that they were holding back which made it a lot of fun trying to figure out who the murderer was. I had a few guesses of who I thought the murderer was but I ended up being wrong in the end which was a nice twist. The dynamics of the friend group was very interesting. It was almost like a lot of them should not be friends based off of all the drama that they were holding against each other. I really liked Izzy as a main character. She was definitely the most down to earth out of all of these pretentious teens. Her mother is a teacher at the elite boarding school that they attend, which is the only reason that she goes to this school in the first place. So she definitely had a different vibe than the rest of these characters. The big twist at the end of the book was definitely unexpected, so if you're into a big shock reveal at the end, definitely recommend checking this out. It gave very much Clue vibes, so I do recommend it. It was a lot of fun reading it. 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up, I read The Girls of Summer by Kate Bishop. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows 17-year-old Rachel and her best friend Caroline who decide to travel to a Greek island the summer before college starts. There, Rachel meets a much older man named Alistair who she feels instantly drawn to. 15 years later, Rachel returns to this island with her now husband, Tom, and that starts to bring up some memories that she had buried, and it's kind of the story of that. The story is told in multiple timelines from the present 15 years ago, as well as flashbacks from Rachel's past, which I think really enhanced the overall storytelling of this. It's a very slow burn read and I think that the pacing did a very good job enhancing the overall vibes of this story. It focuses very heavily on trauma, manipulation, predatory behavior, and the Me Too movement. I wouldn't say that this was a particularly plot driven book. I think that it is definitely more of a character driven story. You're very invested in Rachel and what she went through on the island. It was very interesting to see kind of the lens that she puts over her time on the island and how she couldn't get past those events even 15 years in the future. I can't say that I was the biggest fan of Rachel and I didn't like her as an adult and the choices that she was making, but you can see how the trauma she endured on the island kind of made her make the decisions that she makes in her future. I also just really hated the way that she treated Tom. He was just so loving and caring and she was just such a big bitch to him, just very cold and not nice. <laughs> it just rubbed me the wrong way and I don't think she really had any character development in the end either, so she just never really grew on me. I did read this debut in one sitting though. The writing style is very addictive and you do want to keep turning the pages to figure out what's going to happen, so I did give it a 4 out of 5 stars. It's worth the read. Next up we have Heartstopper Volume 5 by Alice Oseman. I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows on with Nick and Charlie's love story and it is just such a dang cute graphic novel. I love these characters so much. I've definitely fallen in love with the entire friend group. They're all just so lovable and adorable and so sweet to one another. I just have loved watching them grow together as the series progressed and have their bonds grow stronger. Charlie and Nick's relationship is so cute. I love how caring they are towards each other and I love how well they communicate about their wants and needs. Their relationship has just grown so much and deepened in such a big way during the installments of this series and it's just been so lovely to watch. I also really loved Tori in this and the discussion she has with Charlie about her sexuality. I think that is a very important conversation and I think it was done really well. I can't wait until the final installment but I am going to be very very sad that this series is over but I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. If you haven't read Heartstopper, <laughs> what are you doing? Read it. The next book I have is The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins. I give this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Lady Kilmore Ruby McTavish who has just passed away and when she does so she is the wealthiest woman in North Carolina but she is also the unluckiest because she is a four-time widower. She has left Ashby House and all of her money to her adoptive son Camden which makes the rest of the McTavish family very angry especially when he wants nothing to do with the estate or any of the money. When another relative passes, Camden is called back to the estate to help with the affairs and it's kind of the story of that. Rachel Hawkins' adult books are quickly becoming some of my favorite books. I just find her writing style to be so addictive and I can never put these books down because I want to know so desperately what is going to happen in the end. I actually listened to this one on audiobook. It is a full cast audio which I think made the reading experience so much better for me. We get chapters from Ruby in the form 
form of letters, Camden, as well as Jules, who is Camden's wife. We get scenes from the past through these letters from Ruby that really showcase her personality and the ways in which her husbands met their demise, which I really loved. And then we also get scenes from the present from Jules and Camden at Ashby House, which help to unravel the twists and turns in the story. Jules was definitely my favorite character. She is just so sassy and she made me laugh out loud a couple of times with the witty comebacks that she has for the McTavish family. There were just so many secrets that this family was hiding and it was so much fun unraveling them all. I definitely recommend picking this up. 4.5 out of 5 stars. I just love these characters. They're so much fun. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is The Unleashed by Danielle Vega. This is the sequel to The Haunted Duology where Hendrix and her friends perform a seance in the hopes of banishing an evil spirit to once it came. I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book picks up a few months after where the first book leaves off. I definitely did not enjoy it as much as the first book, but I still had a fun time while reading. A lot of reviewers have mentioned that there are a lot of spelling and grammar errors in this book, but I listened to it on audio so I didn't really see those so I can't really complain but if you're going to read it physically maybe keep that in mind if that's something that's going to irk you. I am still not the biggest fan of the insta love in this. I think that Eddie and Hendrix knew each other for maybe a month before this all went down so I just I can't understand the connection that they supposedly have. I think that this is a story you definitely need to suspend your belief in a little bit um, especially when it comes to like parent involvement. Parents are just completely out of this story, which with the amount of times that these teenagers are screaming bloody murder in their bedrooms at night, you think like one parent would come and check on their child, but it, it's just very evident that parents don't exist in this world. It does seem to leave off on a bit of a cliffhanger, like maybe there's going to be a third book coming. I don't know though. I feel like it's been published for a while with nothing in the works, but you never know. I did really like the epilogue as well. I think that it was really fun. But yeah, I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Not as good as the first, but still a lot of fun. All right, everybody. So those were the first seven books that I read for the month of January 2024. If you are interested in the other eight, check out wrap up number two when it is posted. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!